Okay, when it comes to the federal system, those people that have tried to do it on their own in the last four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and some of them have had some success, some of them have had limited success, some of them have had no success at all. Uh, and, and it, you know, it can be frustrating, especially if you don't have any help. Uh, unfortunately, three or four or five years ago, there was a lot of the, the system was different. So if you tried this five years ago and you failed, it's probably not your fault. It's probably because the system was more difficult back then. It's gotten a lot easier. And, and obviously, you want to take advantage of that. But you want to take advantage of areas that you're, you're actually have the most success in taking advantage of. Um, you know, like people say, taking the low-hanging fruit. Do that in the beginning. Get all the easy-to-win stuff first. And then we'll focus on the larger, more difficult contracts as as the you know system familiar with it and, and blah blah blah. So we're going to look at the system as a whole and see what you qualify for, what you don't, what you need to do at this point, what you don't need to do at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you've I've, I know you've heard about simplified acquisitions. You've heard me talk about them uh, and set asides. Okay. The way the set-asides work is actually simple, and keep this in mind. Right now, there's 1.2 million for-profit vendors in SAME. Over 900,000 of them are inactive. So there's only about 330,000 active for-profit vendors in SAME. More than half of those are big business. Uh, you know, more than half of those are IBM's Raytheon's in the world. But let's just say that half are big, half are small. That only leaves about 160,000 small businesses that are active. Our organization has registered 80,000 SAM registrations, so we're technically responsible for half the small businesses in the system right now. And if you look at the set-asides, contracts that are set-aside for these types of uh, vendors, the small business is the largest. As a minority, you can get 5%. If you're woman-owned, you can get 5%. Veterans get 5 8 8As get 5 Service-disabled veterans and hub zones get 3 now, this doesn't sound like a lot, but we're talking 3% of the entire federal budget or 5% of the entire federal budget. Have you checked to see if you're in a hub zone? Uh, I am not, but uh, I was looking for some hub zone around uh, the area that I live, and I found some. Okay. Um, is this a startup company, or has this business been established for a while? Uh, startup company. To start up. Okay. As a startup, you can do the hub zone, but you cannot do the 8A. So we're not going to worry about the 8A for now, okay, because we can't even do it. It's got to be in business at least one year for us to start processing it, and we're going to have to have a second tax return to finalize it. So our goal over the next year is going to be to win as many contracts as possible from different agencies so that in a year's time, you can qualify for the 8A. Okay. All right. What you want to do over the next year to qualify for the 8A, then you're going to do, uh, you, you're a minority, right? Yes. I'm, what type of minority? Uh, uh, I'm Persian American. Okay. Is your personal net worth under 250000 Yes. Okay, not including your house. You could live in the Taj Mahal, but it's your personal net worth under 250000 I want you to keep it that way, okay? Over the next okay. year. You win a big fat co contract and make a bunch of money, invest the money back into your business. Don't go out and buy any toy. Not yet. You can eventually, but not in the first year. All right? Keep your net worth under 250000 Got it. I know people that have, have done this, and they won a big fat contract, and they went out and bought an RV and a rental property. And, you know, you deserve to take care of yourself. I'm not saying that, but let's focus on the long-term solution, not the short-term. So over the next year... We need to win as many contracts as possible from different areas, from different clients. We can't have all of our eggs in one basket. And you're going to put that money back into the business, okay? Okay. You're going to have to be the highest paid person. That's fine. But you're going to put uh, a dollar more. You're going to pay yourself a dollar more than anybody else, and you're going to put the rest of that money back in the business, okay? Your total market uh, assets are under $4 million, right, including the business? Yeah. Have you made more than $250,000 a year for the last three years average? I have not. Okay. You're an American citizen? Yes, I am. Okay. And the last thing we need to focus on over the next year, not that you're going to go out of your way to get in trouble, but don't go out of your way to not get in trouble, okay? DUIs, domestic violence. 
uh, any of that stuff. Anything that's a felony can affect your 8A. So don't go in, don't get into any trouble. Stay out of trouble. Not like, like you're going to go out of your way, but go out of your way not to get in trouble. Okay? Got it. Got it. Do you have any federal unpaid obligations? Do you have any bank notes, student loans, stuff like that? Uh, I have a student loan, but I'm paying for that. Okay. Don't worry about it. As long as you're in the process of paying it back, or you have an ag as long as you have an agreement with the government to pay it back, you're fine. Yes, I make okay. a, a monthly payment right now. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So that's what we need to do over the next year to get you set up for this 8A. In the meantime, the hub zone, if you're not in a hub zone right now, if your office isn't located in a hub zone and you don't have any employees, right? No, I don't. Okay. If your office isn't in a hub zone and your house isn't in a hub zone, let's not worry about it for now because it's not going to do you any good unless your business is located in a hub zone and you live in a hub zone. I don't live in a okay. hub zone right now. All right. It takes three to six months to process a hub zone registration. So uh, over the next three to six months, maybe we'll consider uh, getting an office in a hub zone and, and hiring employees in a hub zone. For now, let's not worry about it. Okay? Okay. GSA. You are going to and probably have already been receiving phone calls from people telling you you need a GSA. You don't need a GSA, okay? Don't let anybody tell you different. You should have at least two years of experience. You need at least two years of contracts before a GSA is really going to benefit you. Or you need what we call a sponsor. You need to win a contract with the government. Uh, make an impression on that purchasing agent, you know, create a, a good impression, good relationship, and then they will come to you and they will say, hey, by the way, if you get on a GSA, I can do larger, longer-term contracts. That's when we do a GSA, when we have a sponsor, okay? So let's not worry about that for now. Let's put that on the back burner. Simplified acquisitions. You've, you've heard me talk about them. Do you understand how they work? Yes, I do. Okay. I was going to show you one or two real quick. Simplified acquisitions are contracts that are not 